In this video, we're going to look at how to use AWS AppSync to create a new GraphQL backend for a to-do list. To get started, you need to have an AWS account and go to aws.amazon.com or go to aws.amazon.com and create a new account. Once you have an account, go ahead and choose sign into the console. And we need to use the AppSync service, so I'm going to go ahead and look for that and go ahead and click on AWS AppSync and get started from there. If you've ever been here before and created an API, you'll see a list of the APIs that you've created and you'll be able to either create a new API or choose one of your existing APIs. If this is your first time here, this screen should look a little different, but either way, we should have this orange Create API button on the top right hand corner of the screen. Let's go ahead and click on that and create a new API. Because this API is a to-do list, I'm going to go ahead and call it to-dos. Underneath the API name, we have an option to either choose a template or a custom schema. If you choose a sample schema, this is going to have a pre-populated schema for you. If you want to come back here and kind of do this, it's a good thing to do the sample schema to kind of pick through and get ideas about how to configure and set everything up. But for us, we're going to use a custom schema starting from scratch. I'll go ahead and click Create. This will take us to the dashboard of our newly created AppSync API. In the API details, we have the API URL. This can be attached to an iOS or an Android or React Native or a web project or whatever type of client that you're using to connect to your new API. We also have an auth mode. This can be either IAM, API key, or Cognito user. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for now at API key. This can be switched, though, if you'd like to do that by going to settings. Let's go ahead and go to schema and create our first item in our schema. This is going to be a type of to-do. We'll give the to-do an ID, a name, and a completed. The ID is going to be of the ID type. The name is going to be a string, and completed is going to be a Boolean. All of the values are going to be required. Next, let's go ahead and create a query. We'll call this fetch to do. This will take an ID and it will return a to do. Now let's go ahead and set up a schema. And then the schema will place our query. And we'll go ahead and click save. Now that we've created and saved our schema, we can go ahead and create a resource and attach a data source to it by just clicking Create Resources. In the type, we'll go ahead and choose To Do. We'll let the table name stay at To Do Table. We'll look down here where we see the following will be added to your schema. And we see that we're going to be getting a lot of new types, queries, and mutations added to our schema. So we're going to have the availability to do things like querying, updating, adding, and deleting items from our database. We'll also have subscriptions set up for us. So I'll go ahead and click Create. Now that our resources have been created and our schema has been updated, we should be able to go to Data Sources, choose To Do Table, and be taken to the DynamoDB console where our new table has been created. And we should be able to click on Items and see that no items are there. Let's go ahead and add an item to make sure this is all working correctly. So let's go to schema and let's look at the mutations that we have available to us. We have a create to do mutation that takes an input. The input is a type in and of itself. The create to do input takes an ID, a name, and a completed Boolean. Let's go ahead and try that out by copying the create to do, going to queries, and we'll go ahead and do mutation create to do. We'll call create to do, passing in an input. The input is going to be ID, we can hard code a string here for now. Name and completed. Here we'll just return the ID. To execute the mutation, we'll just go ahead and click on this orange play button. And we see that we get an error saying that our schema is not yet configured for mutations. To fix that, let's go ahead and go to schema. Go down to the bottom where we've declared our schema, and let's add a mutation and set that to mutation. And let's go ahead and click Save. Go back to Queries, Execute again, 
and we see that our to-do was created and we have our ID that came back as the return value. Let's go to DynamoDB, refresh, and we should see our new to-do that's been created there. Let's go ahead and try to fetch an item from our database now. To do that, let's go to Query. Let's go to Get To Do. And let's try a query of Get To Do, passing in an ID of the new hard-coded ID that we've passed in for the mutation. Here we'll return the ID, name, and completed. Okay, great. We see that the mutation has worked and we saw it put in our database and now that we've tried to fetch our to-do, we see that it has come back as well. Let's go ahead and add another to-do here and try to fetch a list of items. So now we go to DynamoDB. We should have two items in our database. We'll go to our console, to our schema, and we'll look at a query that gets all of the items that we'd like. So we have a list to do's query. It has two arguments. It could take a first and an after property. The first is going to be basically a paginated value, and then the after also has to do with pagination. It returns a to-do connection. The to-do connection has an items and a next token property. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and go to our queries and we'll do a new query right above our mutation here. We'll call this list to do's and we'll call list to do's and again this has a items property so we'll look for the items and we'll take the ID name and completed property from these items. This should return a list of to-dos. Okay, great. We see that that's working as well. This pretty much sets everything up that we will need for our client. So if you want to know which mutations and queries and things that you have available to you, they're basically all set up here. So if you want to set up a subscription, those are already set up for you. You have your type of to-do along with the mutations and queries kind of already set up. So basically what you'll do with this, you'll wrap your AppSync client and you'll be able to kind of interact with the AppSync database that you've just created. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the YouTube comments or reach out to me directly and ping me. I would love to help you out. Thanks.